Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Unreal City Building tutorial series where today I'm going to be making a grid based system for our world. I'm making this grid system so that I can place lots of things in world and have them snap to certain locations. As you can see kind of outlined by this checkerboard I just want to have a single building tile on each one of these individual checkers. That's going to be how I stitch together my road system and how I want to plonk my buildings alongside roads and stuff like that. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a grid manager. This is just going to be an actor that I can put in the world and it will kind of manage all the things to do with the grid. So if I just open this up here and bring that across, right now it's just empty. But I'm just going to set this up by adding a few variables onto it. So what the variables that I want is I want to know my grid size. What I mean by this is how many individual components of the grid go all the way across. So if I was to go to my main game, if I was to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is a 10 by 10 grid here. So I want to be able to specify this in my grid, grid manager and it will adjust the size of everything uh, accordingly. So for now 10 seems like a good grid size and then I also want to make sure that I know what the world size is between these grid points. So for instance um, what the gaps are between the individual points so that can be changed. Um, I think I'll put that as a, a thousand for now. Um, so if I go back into the world, um, in Unreal units, the middle of this square and the middle of this square are about a thousand units apart, or they should be exactly a thousand units apart. So hopefully that will translate over. Right, so going back into my grid manager, I also want to add in an array of these objects that I'm going to spawn. So I'm just going to call this my grid array. Unfortunately in Blueprint you can't really do 2D arrays which is a bit of an annoyance but we'll have to get through that unfortunately. Um, and this is just going to be an actor type reference and it's going to be an array of actors. So compile and save that and then and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function that's going to populate the grid for us. So based on the functions that we've made, um, sorry not the functions, the variables, just grid size and world grid size. I'm going to run through this populate grid function and it's going to set up my grid completely independent of me having to drag and drop stuff into it, which would be a bit of a nightmare, probably all in and would take a lot of time. Um, so the first thing that I want to do is if I drag this grid array in, uh, I'm just going to make sure that gets cleared down when we do a populate, um, just to make sure it's a brand new grid, compile save that. And then the first thing I actually want to find is if I go to my main game, if I were just to make a grid from zero, zero, the grid would populate the bottom half. So you can see the bottom right of the screen, it would populate the grid from here and it would go outwards that way. And it would go, or if it's going positive Y, it would actually go up. Um, so I can just, I'll just drag and drop this building to show you. So the first, the first grid would actually be here. And then the second one would be here and then the third here. So because this is the point zero zero in the world, I actually need to figure out what offset I need my grid to move it so that the first point is actually all the way over in this corner instead. Uh, it's quite basic logic to do that. Um, because we know what our grid size is and what our world grid size is, so the distance between positions, um, what we can actually do here is just pull these out so you want to get them both in get the world size there and then if we multiply these together that basically gives us the the full distance of the grid right so from the very far left to the very far right and the top to the bottom is what this is going to output essentially so if we actually half this so if i just times it by a float and then put 0.5 Compile and save that. Then we know the half size of our grid. And then there is one last thing you need to offset it by, and then that is by the world grid size. Again, we're just going to times this by 0 0.5 to get it halved. Because currently the 
grid position is taken from the far left and the far right rather than the center of the grid. So we want to find the distance of one single grid cell and find the center point of that. So that's why we're halving this. Um, and then if we just subtract these together, if we do this, and then if I just create a local variable just for this function, and I'm gonna call it world offset, that's gonna be of type float, and it's just going to be a single variable. Compile and save that. Let's bring this over here, and maybe comment it saying calculate Offset, like so. I'm just gonna set this now. There we go, that should be our offset fully calculated. And now what I need to do is I need to loop, I need to do a double loop. I need to do a loop of the grid size, uh, a for loop that is. So if I do a for loop, uh, I don't need to have a break in here. I just need a for loop for it. Um, I'm going to loop through the grid going along the X and then inside that I'm going to loop through it going through the Y to populate our grid. And what I actually do want to do here is the first index should be zero and it actually needs to be the grid size minus one um, for the last index because that's how arrays work. Um, if you're familiar with programming you'll already know that. Um, and then inside this loop so what I'm going to do here is just pull out, do the exact same, just do another for loop with the index being zero and the last index being the grid size minus one. And then just so you can kind of get a better understanding of what I'm talking about, this is the, the Y loop. So we'll go down the, each Y position of the grid and then this is the X loop. And this is where we actually populate things. Um, because you, because you, you know, based on basic math, uh, a grid. If you know the size of one side of it, um, each end of the area of that grid is the x times the y. So that's why we're doing it like this. Uh, and then what we need to do is figure out the position of where we want to spawn our grid object. So to do that, pull out the world grid size again. We are going to multiply this by the index of the x. Um, so if we just do a times a flow on, oh no, it's a, an integer, sorry. So times int, drag that into there, compile and save that. And then we also want to do the same another times on the integer because we get the y position from the first loop based on the index that we are there. So the top is the X, the bottom is the Y. We're then gonna get the world offset and we're just gonna subtract the world offset from these um, things that we've created. Oh yes, we have to truncate based on the parameters, that's fine. Um, so we just take the world offset off both of them. And then now using these, this is how we figure out where to spawn our grid. Just want to make a vector, there we go. Um, top one is a X, top one is the Y. Again, a bit of truncation there because we've used integers and not floats, but that's fine. Then we're gonna make a transform using this, like so. And now we want to spawn an actor um, using this transform. So if I bring that all the way out, spawn actor from class. Um, what I might quickly do is, if I go back in here, I'm just gonna quickly make a grid cell. This will be expanded on in the future. Um, it's just gonna be an actor uh, grid cell, but it's gonna contain a bunch of information like what building is currently on this gr uh, cell, um, is this cell currently occupied? What is the position and how it can link with other areas? So for now, I'm just gonna add a sphere to it so that we get a nice visual re representation of what's going on. And I will actually just make it a sphere that doesn't actually collide with anything. There we go. Uh, go back to the grid manager. So the class we're gonna have is a grid cell Compile, save, ah, that's not gonna work. So drag the spawn transform in, 
compile save there, and then always spawn, ignore collisions, that's fine. And then just so that we've always got a reference to this, get the grid array, add in this, and the return value goes into there. And that is all we need to do to populate the grid. So if we go back to our main game, I'll drag the grid manager in and save it. And then if I press play, nothing happens because I haven't actually called this function yet. So if you go to the event graph and then in the begin play, we're just going to call populate grid. Compile, save that, go back, save, hit play. And now you can see there's a little ball on the middle of each square. Um, so that's really good. Uh, you know, if we want to change the parameters of this, we actually want to make these variables public so that they can be changed uh, just in editor rather than having to do it um, on the defaults. Um, so if I get rid of the old grid manager, bring in this one, should be able to change the grid size here. So if I change that to five, Save that and run. You can see my grid is now shorter, but still stayed centered, which is good. Um, so yeah, but let's leave that at 10 as the default, just so we've got a nice thing. Okay, cool. So that's the grid setup. Now what I want to do is actually, when I hit play, I want my buildings that I can place down to snap to the nearest grid point. And there's a bit of, I can do this in an easy way or I can do this in a hard way. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to do the easy way, but I may have to change this in the future based on how taxing it becomes on uh, the engine because it's quite an expensive call. So this one is going to be, I'm going to make a function called get closest uh, grid position. This function is going to take in a vector uh, so it's going to take in a type vector and that's just going to be the uh, in position. And then in the outputs, it's going to return a vector and that's going to be the vector of the closest grid. So output vector like so. Compile, save that. Bring this out of the way a little bit. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a local variable that's basically just going to be the return value. This is going to be the closest position. Uh, make that a type vector. Uh, and then before we forget to do it later, we're just going to get this out and plug it straight into there, like so. Compile, save that. Um, another local variable we're going to have is the closest distance. And this is um, some, a float value that we're going to update as we run through the function to figure out what our actual um, closest position is. Um, right, so let's get our, use our, our grid array. The first thing we're going to do is set up our local variables so they're at least always set to the first element in the array. So we're just going to get a copy of the first index in the array. We're going to get the actor location. like that, um, and then we're going to call set closest position on this, like that. Um, and then another thing we're going to do is we're going to do a distance check between the vector that's been passed into this function and the closest, um, uh, well, the first actor in the array, and then Based on that return value, we're going to set the closest distance, like so. Uh, and now that it's hopefully going to become a little bit more obvious what I'm doing here. Um, I can just push that out a bit. Um, so now I'm going to do a for loop. Um, it's actually going to be a for each loop. Um, basically going to loop through this grid and see which the closest element is and get the transform out of that. So what I need to do is I need to get the actor location of the actor in the grid. Um, and basically what I've done here, I'm just going to do again over here, but with a few little checks. So the first thing I'll need to do is do a distance check on, do a distance check on the, um, the actor and the input 
position like that and this is where I do my logic um, so if this is less than this flow is less than our current closest distance that, that's when we know we need to update our two local variables here so pull a branch off of there and plug the loop body into that if this returns true then we're going to update our parameters so set closest position to be our actor location and this return value of the distance is going to be our set closest distance like so easy peasy bring the return node down and then once our for each loop has completed we return out easy as that um, now all I need to do is go back into my I believe I put this in the player controller at yet the update placement so I've already got this logic here I just need to push back this set to location. This is where I set the currently selected actors location in the in the world. Um, I'm just going to do a get actor of class here to find where our grid manager is. So if I just look for a grid manager like that, um, and then using this, I'm going to call that function that we just made. Um, so the get closest grid position, again pull that out a little bit, there we go, plug that into the final set and then use this, this vector for it and then the location goes into there, compile save this and then hopefully now when I run, my buildings now snap to the nearest grid point and that's exactly what I wanted. Um, so I hope this uh, video was useful. Um, I know this video might have felt not as progressive as some of the other ones, but you can see where I'm going in the future. I'm going to start putting roads and buildings on these individual grid cells, and that's where we're going to start getting into the meat of our game. So I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope this was useful. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to cover anything in particular, and I'll take a look at that. Um, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.